Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Janice Lowe. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. A Hong Kong resident is said to be among five people killed in a horrific road crash in Australia. China and the Philippines pledge to iron out their maritime disputes. And locally, the police chief defends the use of identification tax and rallies. A Hong Kong resident is among five people killed in the worst road ac accident in the Australian state of Victoria in a decade. Such was the nature of the damage that we've had to call disaster victim identification experts and our search and rescue team to try and um, investigate how many people were involved, and that's the delay, and that's why I can only tell you now how many people have been killed. The horrific crash occurred near the town of Threadmerton on Thursday. A motorist ignored a giveaway sign and slammed into a car carrying five people. All those in the second car were killed when it collided with a milk tanker. One of the victims was said to have come from Hong Kong and three were from Taiwan. They and the fifth victim all reportedly work in an abattoir. A 29-year-old man was arrested and charged with dangerous driving. Police said he had taken cannabis. China and the Philippines have agreed to work together to resolve maritime disputes in the South China Sea. This follows a meeting between the two foreign ministers at a time of rising geopolitical tensions with the United States flexing its military muscles in the region. Sachin Ketri reports. A protest in the Philippine capital underlined the tensions between the Philippines and Beijing over their rival maritime claims in the resource-rich South China Sea. A meeting in Manila today helped bring the two sides closer to a settlement. Foreign Minister Chingan and his Philippine counterpart Enrique Manalo pledged to work together to resolve their differences and boost bilateral ties. Today's meeting will give us an opportunity to follow through on the plans and gains made for our, for our country's recent high-level interactions and make some headway in addressing common issues and challenges. Chin stressed that a healthy and stable relationship between Manila and Beijing is vital for peace and stability in the region. We should solve our differences in the spirit of credibility, consultation and dialogue, Chen told his host. Chin's visit comes as the United States is working hard to lure Manila into its orbit. The US and the Philippines are conducting their largest joint military drills involving thousands of soldiers from both sides. The combat maneuvers involve live fire drills including a boat sinking rocket assault in waters across the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait. The exercises have angered China, which is also uneasy after Philippines gave U.S. troops access to four additional bases in the north of the country. The new arrangement gives Washington a strategic advantage in monitoring the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. Sachin Katwi, HKIBC. Locally, Police Chief Raymond Su has defended the use of identification tags in rallies. And former Chief Executive Lang Chen Ying warned that there could be a malicious intent in some demonstrations. During his recent visit to Hong Kong, top Beijing official Xia Baolong said demonstrations are not the only way to press for demands. Speaking on an iCable program, the vice chairman of the country's top political advisory body said protests are permitted under the law, but warned that some might have a malicious intent. Lang Chen-Ying claimed that certain groups had made use of demonstrations to oppose the government. Some even attempted to overturn the government on issues related to elections, he said. The former chief executive also accused protest organizers of inflating the number of marches in a bid to get more publicity. Following a ban on protests during COVID, some have been held after pandemic measures were axed. But police told participants to wear identification tags, 
a practice that was not required in the past. Meeting the press after attending a passing out parade at the police college, Commissioner Raymond Su echoed Leung, saying citizens are entitled to assemble and demonstrate. Su defended the use of identification tags, saying they are required in many events, citing marathons as an example. He added that tags allow both the organizers and police to identify the participants and could guarantee the safety of protesters and other people. Chief Executive John Lee and his delegation have visited the Shenzhen headquarters of electric car maker BYD and were briefed on the Sky Shuttle rail system. Company founder Wang Chuanfu welcomed Lee, who was accompanied by Hong Kong officials and lawmakers. They witnessed an experiment involving BYD's new blade battery and the ordinary lithium battery and were briefed on the Sky Shuttle, which the company developed. Lee did not respond directly when asked if Hong Kong would adopt the Sky Shuttle, but said he's open to the idea. The delegation split into two in the afternoon. One, led by the chief executive, visited the Tianhai Shengang Dream Workshop to talk to young entrepreneurs. Chief Secretary Eric Chan and his entourage visited the headquarters of tech giant Tencent. Students of Wu Changchung Secondary School in Pak Fu Lam will be transferred to Chao's Faf College in Tongchong in the next academic year because of a merger. The education minister is happy with the decision by Caritas, the sponsoring body, and said more schools may face a similar situation in the future. We have keep uh, uh, communicating with uh, different school sponsoring bodies, uh, with uh, uh, schools that maybe have a risk uh, under the uh, declining uh, student population. For the students, I think they are aware of uh, this arrangement, and we know that the school has a, a close uh, contact with the parents and the students. Uh, to make the necessary support and arrangement for the students to transfer, whether to transfer or to stay in the original uh, um, the school uh, lo location. Caritas will provide school buses for students to travel between Chongchong and Park Fu Lam in the beginning. The group said it will try to place students in other schools in Southern District if they are reluctant to travel all the way to Chongchong. The head of Hong Kong University's Faculty of Medicine says the department is facing a manpower shortage because COVID hindered the recruitment of staff. But Lao Chak Singh hopes that over the next four years, the medical school will be able to recruit 140 personnel from overseas. The workforce is very, very short of people at the moment particularly doctors and nurses. And therefore, um, we need to continue to recruit, to replenish you know, what we are actually uh, lacking within Hong Kong. From the medical school point of view, what we really need is someone who actually works in the medical and health um, uh, related sciences field, someone who has achievement in academic development of medical and health sciences, Overseas, sporadic shelling has been reported in the Sudanese capital despite a truce that was called to mark the Muslim festival of Eid. As tension in Khartoum rises, foreign governments are making plans to evacuate their nationals from a city where food and water are running out. One of the two rival groups fighting for control of Sudan sets it will allow airports to reopen so that foreigners can leave. The death toll has risen to more than 400, with a number of children among the casualties. We now have reports of at least nine children killed, at least 50 have been injured. Um, those numbers will continue to rise as long as fighting continues. Really important to remember this fighting also means that you've just got large numbers of people trapped so they haven't got access to electricity and they're terrified of running out of food of water of medicines 
Heavy fighting has been reported in the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, with Russia saying its forces have made advances. According to Moscow, only the western part of the city remains under Ukrainian control. But Kyiv says reinforcements are being rushed to Bakhmut in an attempt to stop it from falling into Russian hands. The city is largely in ruins after months of fighting as both Russia and Ukraine struggle for victory. Muslims across Asia have been celebrating the festival of Eid, marking the end of the fasting month of Ramadan. In Indonesia, thousands of people gathered on a field next to the El Asam Mosque in the capital Jakarta for morning prayers. This year, people in the world's most populous Muslim-majority country are observing Eid without COVID restrictions. In New Delhi, there were large crowds at the Jama Masjid, one of the oldest mosques in India. Most worshippers in the capital said they prayed for peace and national unity. In Karachi and across Pakistan, Muslims began Eid with prayers for peace and compassion. Feasts and family gatherings followed the religious rituals. On to the weather now. Be prepared for a gloomy start tomorrow, mainly cloudy with low visibility in some areas. Brighter periods later with the mercury ranging from 22 to 26 degrees. Warmer in the following days. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Saturday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Janice Lowe. Good night.